episode of Intercon Labs, where we push the boundaries of NEMA rated enclosures in the most unexpected ways. This week, in honor of bow hunting season and uh, deer hunting, which is huge out here in central Illinois, uh, we're going to be testing, putting down the normal tools today, and really testing uh, the strength and durability of a couple different enclosures uh, with different kind of arrowheads. To do this, we wanted to bring in an iconic bowman, but we really couldn't find one. So instead, we have Sean, our facilities manager. We turned him into an icon. So today, instead of managing the facilities, he's going to help us manage the firepower. All right, to start us off today, what we're going to do is give Sean a couple warm-up shots, right? So we have the famous William Tell, uh, apple off the head shot. Let's see how his, uh, his skills are this season. Then we're gonna go into uh, a little bit bigger maybe, but uh, let's see if it's gonna have a little bit more action on this. We're gonna have a can of crush uh, soda, see if we can hit that from about 10 to 20 yards. And then we're gonna go into the big boy here. Uh, this is gonna be uh, the water-filled watermelon ball. Uh, let's see if we can get a good explosion out of this and help uh, actually clean up some of the crush if you're gonna be realistic about this. Um, so we'll, we'll knock this off and then after that we're gonna get to the main event. Uh, we have our special uh, control panel deer, uh, Bucky, and uh, he is a he is the the, the ten point uh, buck that's half uh, steel enclosure, half uh, fiberglass enclosure. So we'll see how the arrows handle on that. All right, so next uh, next up for us is the crush. We're gonna crush and crush here with the arrow. Uh, Sean's gonna put one right through it, hopefully the middle, uh, and see this thing, see if it's gonna explode. We shook these up pretty well. Uh, and from there, let's see what kind of mess we can make. Well, it looks like Sean's actually uh, centering in here, so I think uh, I think we're getting down to it. So let's see if we can clean this up a little bit. We'll bring in that watermelon ball and see how, how big of an explosion we can get off that. We just got the watermelon uh, ball done, and uh, that was a clean, clean shot. Literally split the top of this open, but we do have a good amount of water still in there. It's not like empty. All right, so now on to the main event. Sean's all warmed up, uh, so we're getting down to Bucky. Bucky is uh, half steel enclosure, half fiber latch enclosure. So what we're looking to do is we'll test uh, a series of different arrows and uh, see if we hit the sweet spot, what this is gonna do. See if the arrow's gonna go through it, if it's just gonna dent it, um, or you know, if this is gonna totally destroy it. Um, so 
let's move on to the arrows. First shot's gonna be uh, going with the, the typical field arrow. So this is a typical target practice kind of arrow. Um, very common. We're gonna see what this is gonna do. Next, we have a blunt tip. Uh, blunt tip is really, I believe, for hunting small game. Uh, then we go into uh, the broadhead. So this is typical for hunting uh, any larger game. Uh, very pointy, uh, razor sharp. Then we get to the mechanical one. The mechanical one's kind of crazy. Uh, this one, you know, spreads out as it impacts. So, Sean's gonna notch up, and uh, let's see what this is gonna do, and, and if it's gonna take out our, our 10 point buck uh, made of industrial control valves. So that was the field tip on the steel. So that did not make it through at all. This is a pretty solid, solid enclosure here. Um, pretty significant dent, but really this thing held up uh, like a champ. So looking at the inside, you can see that it did not penetrate. All it did was uh, damage the, the paint that was on there, but uh, the field arrow did not go through uh, at all. Very surprising about not going through. I mean, that shot back just as far as the steel one. So look on the fiberglass enclosure. You could see that it it most likely did penetrate, but not much. I mean, it didn't go all the way through. It really put a good crack in it, but that field arrow did not do any, barely any damage to these. So. Uh, Let's move on to, to the next, next arrow, which is going to be the blunt tip. I still think that that's going to have a good crack in it, uh, but I don't know. After I see this field, uh, field arrow, field head go through it, um, and the minimal damage that happened there, who's to say? Alright, so that was the blunt tip on the steel enclosure. Again, pretty much predicted this one. I thought it was just going to put a uh, pretty good dent in it and you could actually see all the, the markings on there where it hit. Um, but again, just a very minimal dent on this. On the inside, I'd be surprised if you notice the damage uh, uh, on this. <clears throat> so our steel enclosure, really working out for us so far. It's pretty, uh, pretty durable. You can see under different kinds of stress. Uh, but now we're going to go after the same arrow on, on the fiberglass. These enclosures are surprisingly durable uh, compared to what we're doing. We're only about 10 yards away uh, and hitting these. But on this one, I mean, honestly, I can't even see really where they hit. Maybe, maybe here's a little bit of a, a dark spot, but this one, I'd say this actually, the fiberglass one held up a little bit more uh, than the metal. So now we're moving on to the broadhead arrow. So far, we have not had any luck penetrating these uh, control panels where we're all surprised by this. Um, but this one, I mean, this is razor sharp, strong tip. Uh, we got three of these arrowheads, so at least uh, we're gonna see, we're gonna make sure they're fresh in each, each uh, attempt. But I'm thinking this one has to go through at least the first panel, the, the first door. I mean, you can see this is the field, our first attempt, and we got the blunt head, and now we have the broad head um, uh, arrow uh, going through it. So this one, just again, barely penetrated um, the actual seal enclosure, just very minimal damage there. So I think, again, components, Bucky, that was the vials, he's still walking.
Now we got some penetration on this one. You can see totally dead center where we wanted to be and about a quarter, I would say, maybe a third of that arrowhead is, is penetrated through. You can see, again, even though it penetrated, it's minimal damage. None of the components that would be back here would even be touched uh, at this point in time. So this uh, is surprisingly uh, a lot more durable than we thought it would be. So we're moving on to our last arrow, which is the mechanical arrow. This is the one that will, upon impact, actually shoot out and a couple different uh, tips will go uh, and do damage. Uh, this one, again, we are like way surprised that nothing has penetrated through. Uh, I initially predicted that this would actually probably go through maybe both sides. We haven't had anything that's gone through even the first side of uh, the door. So I'm thinking that this one, I think it's going to go through the first, uh, first door. I think we're going to have a solid impact, uh, at least on the fiberglass. But the metal one, I think it's going to be very similar to the broadhead. We'll see. Typically, we these are rated for something like dust, for water, but this is definitely, I would say, qualified for the Intercom Labs durability test. Arrow, four times, barely penetrated. You can see where that would be the mechanical. It's a little bit different of a, of a, a tip and a, a entry, but again, didn't get any penetration on this um, into any critical components. So I'm thinking that this, panel right here, the steel enclosure NEMA, NEMA 4 panel, that's a winner in my book. That's gonna, that's gonna protect uh, your equipment. All right, so again, Sean's very close to that center mass uh, in this fiberglass panel. Again, this one's rated NEMA 3 fiberglass. Uh, but this, I would, I'm very surprised. It's holding up almost comparable to uh, a steel enclosure. This did get some penetration in there. Uh, it has the tip, um, but not the whole arrow is fully through. Uh, and as we open this thing up, what we're gonna see is it penetrated just a little less than the broadhead that got stuck in there. Um, but man, Seriously, all the components, everything, all electrical that would be in here, completely safe uh, and secure. There's no way that any of that got damaged. Uh, this Intercon Labs, I mean, the proof, right there. Uh, our, our control panel, our enclosure deer, uh, he survived. I think he's gonna be out in the wilderness, uh, living a good long life because uh, none of our arrows did any damage. So, uh, for any of you bow hunters out there, I recommend that you uh, do not uh, attempt this at home. Remember, don't try this at home, kids. I am a professional. All right, everybody. That concludes episode two of Intercon Labs. Uh, be on the lookout for future videos where we do more testing on our enclosures. Uh, and in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and then check us out on our website, uh, intercompower.com, or you can check out our YouTube uh, channel where we have plenty of educational videos uh, and webinars for uh, all things electrical uh, control and uh, power related. Hey Intercon fans, we're going to give away this Yeti water bottle uh, branded with uh, Intercon um, and a Super E uh, to one lucky viewer that comments uh, below. Let us know what you think you uh, want us to test in the future and uh, we'll pick the best one and that person's going to win the bottle.